it's it's so crazy. Freud would be laughing his butt off, or is in the grave, if we ever said, you know, the way that they take care of people who disagree with the status quo, which is about trying to stop sanity, that they accuse them of sexual things. He'd be like, well, yeah, uh, people can't get their minds away from that. And there's all kinds of deep feelings between men and women about sex. If you want to destroy someone, just say that that person is a sexual predator. Look what happened to Trump 30 years ago in a department store. He supposedly attacked somebody. Right now, you have to be very careful because what if I got sued? What if I said it wasn't true? I might get sued by the plaintiff. They shut people up and they ask them to accept delusion as truth and this sounds like a novel like 1984 because it is well i i have to say it's a very noticeable trend i haven't heard anyone else note it but that people who get crossways with say the cia seem to have like a higher than average likelihood of having kitty porn found on their computers have you exactly. noticed that a absolutely and by <laughs> the way this is one reason there are many reasons i love donald trump um, but one of the reasons is because on national television during a debate for the first uh, presidency that he will serve, um, I hope, um, he held up his hands and he said, and now they're hitting on my hands. And they're saying that because these are small, something else is small. And I'm telling you, there's no problem in that department. And I was, I was up out of my seat. I'm like, Freud would be applauding madly because nobody can do that you have to be a psychological giant to talk about your private parts on national television and say people say they're small but they're not nobody can do that <laughs> that's do a, that. a, but that's a fascinating reaction but that's a guy who will say you know what they're crossing the border in droves we're building a wall yep same guy that's the guy we need why do they call trump psychologically fragile they, well, they call him psychologically fragile because it's, an, it's a convenient way to attack people um, to say, oh, he's, you know, he's not well. Uh, they also say he's psychologically fragile because if you're looking through a filter that is blurry and uh, misdirected, you might see his truths as, not, as, as him not being well. It's just the truth. Right. When he said, even in the van, bad moment in that trailer or whatever, when he said, you know, when you're famous, you can do this to. Yeah. Women. Yeah. Uh, crass. He called it locker room truth, locker room talk. I might say, well, wait a second. It's very weird. But when you're famous and rich, why is it? I would at least open up the question. Why is it that that's an aphrodisiac? Why do men or women uh, allow more degrees of freedom if you're famous, strong, and rich. We don't know that. We should think about that. But what he was saying was joking about the fact that that's not been explained. And it is true. And it is true. So people say he's crazy. No, no, no. He just told you the truth, but you can't hear it. So you're going to call it crazy, right? Uh, the notion that you should vote with paper ballots and they should actually count them. This would seem to be rational, uh, but it it could, you know, satisfy the criteria for the DSM-5 TR plus in the future. Well, why are you saying that? Why would you possibly think that there'd be any monkey business with an election? Now, again, uh, you say things like that. And what they're trying to do is make everybody scared of saying anything true or anything that they wonder about as to whether it might be true. Donald Trump is partly the antidote to that because he just speaks the truth almost obsessively. It's almost an obsession uh, that he doesn't adulterate truth, uh, which is why uh, when people would say, well, I, I'm not sure that he likes minorities. I'd be like, are you kidding me? If you ever said to Donald Trump, I know this black woman who's like, she might be 0.05% more talented than this white male. But, you know, I think you should hire the white male because, you know, it's a white male. He'd, he'd beat the hell out of you. 
be like, what, you want to cheat me out of 0.05% of talent? Are you kidding me? He won't have it because it's all about the talent. It's all about the truth. And there's no hatred there at all for anybody. And the numbers now show it, I think. And the yeah. numbers show it. Yeah. So last last question. I First of all, let me just say I love how interested you are in what is true and how willing you are to pause and ask the first and most important question, which is, is it true? I mean, I think that, you know, if you're not willing to do that, then you're serving lies. It's that simple. But what can the average person, you just said that part of the antidote is, is Trump. Um, mm. But what for the, you know, average person is not in control of who's president or of much else, actually. So how do you stay sane in a society that demands you lie and is pushing you toward mental illness, which is clearly where we live. That's exactly right. And part of the antidote, there, there are several parts of the antidote. One is say what you think and take some lumps. It's okay. You're going to be yeah. stronger. Okay. I mean, not everybody can be Donald Trump and defy, you know, wrong minded courts around the country and the rest of it. Okay. We don't have to be that. But by the way, it's the biggest self help course the world has ever seen. Just watch him and do some of that. That's going to be as good as Tony Robbins or even a little better, right? I love Tony Robbins too, yeah. but, but you know, it's going to be just like that and it's free. So just watch him do what he does. Get a dog, right? I mean, why? Because the- oh, I, lo well, I love these answers. <laughs> right? Get a dog. <laughs> You're speaking my language. <laughs> because the dog loves you and you need to, and you'll have unconditional love for, love for the dog, right? It's just the truth, right? The the. The dog isn't lying to you, and you're not going to lie to the dog. <laughs> I mean, it's big. Exercise. Why? Your body is important, right? I have a friend uh, who talks about posture as the key to well-being. Be in your body. Why? Because they're going to try to take you out of your body at every turn, right? And some of it's technology. Technology is primed to remove you from your body and just say, well, you're really just your profile on Facebook, or you're really just your avatar. Well, no, I'm really not. Um, I really am connected here to my body. And I know it because I go for walks or, you know, look what's happening. The world's trying to help us. The AMA tried to ban boxing. That's thought of as very quaint now, given MMA. Yeah. Because the world tries to reset. It's like, you know what, we better get back in our bodies. Let's have guys have to tap out uh, before their arms or legs are broken. And people would say, well, that's grotesque. It's, it's horrible. No, no, no. It's part of the antidote. We need it right now because otherwise we're going to be evaporated into technology, lies, delusions. Tell people you love them if you really do. That's a wonderful antidote to falsehood. That's an amazing thing, right? If anybody who has a kid you'd give your left and right arm to save one of their hands. That's the truth. That's truth. You, you think about that. That'll help you. You might meditate. Meditation centers people. Why? Because it's about you connecting to God, really. I mean, it doesn't have to be a far out thing or an Eastern philosophy or anything else. It's just about you sitting there and realizing, you know what, I'm breathing, I'm here. And then there's some other nice tricks like if you're feeling troubled, I like to tell people this, if you really have your back against the wall, think of yourself as sitting in a movie cinema watching your own life story. And I like to tell people how many people when Tom Cruise is in trouble, throw away their popcorn and say, let's get out of here. He's in a jam. Absolutely nobody. Everyone sits there and thinks the same thing. I wonder what's going to happen. When you're in pain and you've got troubles, all you really have to do to let God do the rest is just say, I'm, I'm going to sit here, I'm not leaving the theater. Anybody who's ever thought of, God forbid, taking his or her life, just sit in the theater. It's going to get better. And that's some of it. Okay, so I've got six, if I'm remembering this correctly. <laughs> the first is to speak your mind. The second is to get a dog and experience the unconditional love of the mm. dog. The third is to live in your body, get in touch with your body. You're a physical being. You're not just spirit or mist, okay? The fourth would be to get some quiet 
and commune with God or listen, meditate, yes. as you said. Um, the fifth would be get some distance, some perspective on your on your life. Maybe it was just five. I'll add a sixth, which is allow yourself to know that you don't know. And, you know, one thing is my son during all this trouble said, Dad, you know, it doesn't seem like you're really dissolving. Like, are you like, why are you not more troubled? And I said, look, I am. I'm just not I'm not showing you because that's what dads do. OK, of course. I said, but I also look at my own life a bit askance. And I think, I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is for. And so if it turns out that at some point in your life, my son, someone thinks they have your back against the wall and you look at them and you say, go F yourself. I saw my dad go through this. Yeah. Then it all was worth it. Times 10. And I didn't know that. I might not even be on the planet when that happens. So a little sense of mystery is good in saying, I don't know why this is happening. Humility. Humility, but there's a plan. I don't know the whole plan. It's okay. Man, I think you are, I don't think, I know for a fact, you are the most psychologically balanced and healthy psychiatrist I've ever met <laughs> by far. I mean that. <laughs> and I'm just grateful that you came.